Honourable Members, the Speaker. I acknowledge the Ngunnawal and Ngambi peoples who are the traditional custodians of the Canberra area and pay respect to the elders past and present of all Australia's indigenous people. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to vouchsafe thy blessing upon this parliament. Direct and prosper our deliberations to the advancement of thy glory and the true welfare of the people of Australia. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Madam Speaker. I call the... Oh, manager of Opposition Business. Madam Speaker, I seek leave to move the following motion. That the House, one, notes that the Prime Minister committed to lead a government which is transparent and open, and the Coalition's Real Solutions platform stated that the Coalition would, quote, restore accountability and improve transparency measures. B, the Leader of the House, on 30 January this year, committed himself to a parliamentary practice in government to, quote, allow any man member of any political party who has serious questions to answer time to explain themselves through the parliament to the Australian people. And C, the Prime Minister and Minister for Immigration have adopted a new culture of secrecy and are hiding information from the Australian people. The Minister has repeatedly refused to answer questions at weekly briefings. That failure to answer questions has led the Australian people to rely on the Jakarta Post for information about their own government. Questions remain relating to uh, attempted so-called uh, turn-back of boats, buy-back of boats and to the state of negotiations between Australia and Indonesia about a people swap arrangement with Indonesia. And calls on the Minister for Immigration to attend the House immediately and explain for a period not exceeding 30 minutes. A. The status of all discussions with Indonesia about the progress of Operation Sovereign Borders, including those discussions relating to a people swap arrangement with Indonesia. B. How the government intends to pursue its election commitment to turn back boats to Indonesia and buy back boats in fishing villages. And C. Whether any of these measures, which have been effective in reducing the flow of asylum seeker vessels to Australia, are now in jeopardy as a result of the Minister's chaotic handling of his portfolio, including measures such as the regional resettlement arrangements with Papua New Guinea and Nauru and the abolition of visa on arrival arrangements in Indonesia for Iranians. Is leave granted? Leave is not granted. I give the call to the Manager of Government Business, of Opposition Business. Uh, Madam Speaker, I move that so much of standing and sessional orders be suspended, as would prevent the Honourable Member for Watson moving the following motion forthwith. That the House one notes a that the Prime Minister committed to lead a government which is quote transparent and open end quote, and the Coalition's Real Solutions platform stated that the Coalition would quote restore accountability and improve transparency measures. B the Leader of the House on 30 January 2013 committed himself to a parliamentary practice in government to, quote, allow any, manner, any member of any political party who has serious questions to answer time to explain themselves through the parliament to the Australian people. And C, the Prime Minister and Minister for Immigration have adopted a new culture of secrecy and are hiding information from the Australian people. The Minister has repeatedly refused to answer questions at weekly Operation Sovereign Borders briefings. That failure to answer questions has led the Australian people to rely on the Jakarta Post for information about their own government. Questions remain relating to attempted so-called turnbacks of boats, buyback of boats 
and to the state of negotiations between Australia and Indonesia about a people swap arrangement with Indonesia, and two, calls on the Minister for Immigration to attend the House immediately and explain for a period not exceeding 30 minutes a, the status of all discussions with Indonesia about the progress of Operation Sovereign Borders, including those discussions relating to a people swap arrangement with Indonesia. B, how the government intends to pursue its election commitment to turn back boats to Indonesia and buy back boats in fishing villages, and c, whether any of the measures which have been effective in reducing the flow of asylum seeker vessels to Australia are now in jeopardy as a result of the minister's chaotic handling of his portfolio, including the regional resettlement arrangements with Papua New Guinea and Nauru and the abolition of visa on arrival arrangements in Indonesia for Iranians. Madam Speaker, the minister who was the star of the Liberal Party in opposition has become the embarrassment of the government. The government embarrassment. We're about to see where secrecy and transparency leads us when they come to power. I call the uh, Leader of, government of the House. I move that the member be no longer heard. Madam Speaker. The question is that the member be no longer heard. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. The contrary, no. no. I think the ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
to lock the doors. The question is that the member be no longer heard. Those in favour, please pass to the right of the chair and those nose to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Barara, Forest, Wright, Parks and Dawson for the eyes and the members for Fowler, Shortland and Laylor for the nose.
The result of the division is 88 ayes and 57 noes. The motion is therefore resolved in the affirmative. Is the motion seconded? I give the call to the member for Isaacs. The Rambo in oh. opposition. Uh, you self... don't have the call, I'm sorry. The member, the member will desist. He has not had the call. I called the member for Isaacs. I recognise the manager of government business. Oh, opposition business. Sorry. Understanding Order 67, I ask that you restate the question to the House. I'm happy to restate the question to the House. It was one as moved by the manager of opposition business. And the member for Isaacs had the call. Recognise the manager of opposition business. Uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, the motion has been moved and seconded. It is before the House. Under Standing Order 67, we are entitled to invite and to ask the Speaker to restate the entire resolution to the House. And under Standing Order 67, we request that you do so. Somebody would pass it to me. I will read it. Thank you. The Minister of Opposition business has asked that the, that the motion be reread, and it says that the House notes a the Prime Minister committed to lead a government which is transparent and open, and the coalition's real resolutions platform stated that the coalition would restore accountability and improve transparency measures. B the Leader of the House on the 30th of January 2013 committed itself to a parliamentary practice in government to allow any minister of any political party who has previously questioned to answer time to explain themselves through the Parliament of the People, the Australian people. And C the Prime Minister and Minister for Immigration have adopted a new culture of secrecy and are hiding information from the Australian people. The minister has repeatedly refused refused to answer questions at weekly oper Operation Sovereignty Borders briefings. The failure to answer questions has led the, the Australian people to rely on the Jakarta Post for information about their own government. Questions remain relating to attempted so call for turn back the votes, buy back the votes and to state of negotiations between Australia and Indonesia about a people swap arrangement with Indonesia and two calls on the Minister for Immigration to attend the House immediately and explain for a period not exceeding 30 minutes a the status of all discussion with Indonesia about the progress of the Operation Sovereign Borders, including those discussions relating to a people swap arrangement with Indonesia, how the government intends to pursue its election commitment to return back the votes in Indonesia and buy back votes in fishing villages, and see whether there are any measures which have been effective in reducing the flow of asylum seeker vessels to Australia are now in jeopardy as a result of the Minister's chaotic handling of his portfolio, including resettlement, regional resettlement arrangements with Papua New Guinea and Nauru and the abolition of visa arrival arrangements in Indonesia for Iranians. I call the uh, Leader of the House. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The reason why standing orders should not be suspended on this occasion, Madam Speaker, is because the Coalition won the election two months ago, and today we want to introduce the carbon tax repeal bills. And on the Daft Daily program, the carbon tax Order. repeal bills are listed for debate. Now, Labor has just demonstrated for the last 20 minutes that they will do anything to stand in the way of lowering electricity prices in this country. Electricity Bill Shorten, as his first political act in the parliament, has desired to get his manager of opposition business to block the repeal of the carbon tax. 
Point of order. Point of order from the leader of uh, manager of opposition business. Ma Madam Speaker, a large number of comments were made yesterday about people being referred to by correct titles. Uh, to have the Leader of the House immediately abrogating that is inappropriate and should be withdrawn. Uh, he was not actually addressing a member by any title. He was merely using a description, and I do not find the term unparliamentary. The uh, Leader of Government is Leader of the House. Hey, Madam Speaker. <laughs> I recognise the Honourable the Manager of Opposition Business. Uh, Mad Madam Speaker, I I'm not sure uh, whether you heard the description that was given, was but what we, had, what we had was something that even the Prime Minister yesterday Thank you. acknowledged could not be used within the chamber. You are raising the matter a second time. I call the uh, Leader of the House. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the reason why standing orders should not be suspended is because the Australian public expects this government to get on with its program. Yeah. That is why they elected 90 members of the coalition on September the 7th. It was to repeal the carbon tax. The program, the draft daily program, lists the carbon tax repeal I, bills I, as the first item of business, I not parliamentary the stunts. Honourable Manager of Opposition Business. Madam, Madam Speaker, we have no intention of trying to gag his speech, uh, uh, which but we cannot. I would we ask, cannot have a situation, manager, Madam Speaker, the gravity of I this new ruling of allowing. I would ask the manager of opposition business to state the point of order which he is addressing, numbered as it is in the standing orders. And if it is repeating one he's already he has already raised, I have already ruled, and I won't entertain it again. Well, Madam Speaker, the gravity of that ruling what is to allow name-calling of any sort in this parliament no, takes us to a new low, a new low of name-calling. There is no point of order. I call the leader of the house. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, it's very clear that the manager of opposition business doesn't know his standing orders. And in fact, the, while slightly irrelevant to the debate, the Leader of the Opposition should have stuck with the member for Grainler, who's now trying to help him, of course, in this rather embarrassing display of an aptitude on the part of the opposition. Oh, he's, got, he's now got the answer. He's now got the, the standing order number. I would say to the Honourable, the manager of opposition business, that if he is intending to re-raise the same point, or I will consider frivolous or aimed simply to disrupt the proceedings of the House, I will not acknowledge him a again in the course of this particular area of the debate. Madam Speaker, I move that the Speaker's ruling be dissented from. Oh, no. Go right ahead. Madam Speaker, everything that was said yesterday. I recognise the Leader of the House. Madam Speaker, it's very important that a motion to dissent from the Speaker's ruling be in writing and circulated to the government. Uh, we haven't yet seen the motion. Well, soon it'll be said. Well, you've had to help him out, poor thing. You've had to help him out, poor lamb. Get him started. You should have had his job. Is the motion in writing? Yes, it is, and it's with and the class. seconded. Thank you. Proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Everything that was said yesterday about what the standards of this House are going to be becomes absolutely meaningless if the ruling you gave is followed through on. What we had was a clear example of a Member of Parliament being given a name other than his title in this House. That's exactly what we had, and pointed out to you and asked to be withdrawn in the appropriate process according to the standing orders of this parliament. If we can't even get over the threshold of calling people by their title, then every word that we were told yesterday becomes meaningless. Every word we were told about what the standards of this government would be in the dealings with this House means absolutely nothing if they can't even resist the cute name calling. If they can't even get to stage one, Stage one of referring to people by their appropriate title. Madam Speaker, under the previous parliament, we had a speaker who preferred to be called by the title speaker rather than Madam Speaker, and we respected that. You made clear yesterday 
your preference to be called Madam Speaker, and we respect that. But to have no respect come to members of this House at all and for it to be cheap schoolyard name calling that is going to be the order of the day in this House takes us to a new low. Takes us to a new low. Where is the idea of the adults being in charge of the government if it's going to be a case of teasing and name calling and cute games? That is the standard that the Leader of the House, no less, has immediately taken us to. And you, Madam Speaker, yesterday assured us and assured the Australian people this would not happen. You gave the guarantees this would not happen. And we simply want you not merely to honour promises to an election, we want you to honour promises that were made yesterday. It shouldn't be too much for members of this House to expect that stage one, no name calling, call people by their appropriate title, is something that will be honoured. Yesterday, the Prime Minister used a similar phrase to the one now used by the Leader of the House. The media picked him up on it straight away and he acknowledged one thing. He wouldn't get away with using that phrase in this chamber. Well, Madam Speaker, they shouldn't get away with using those phrases in this chamber. They shouldn't get away with being able to completely denigrate 101, principle 101, the very beginning of the principles of the standing orders, that there'll be a level of courtesy. I liked, I liked some of the interviews you gave yesterday, Madam Speaker. I just can't reconcile them at all at all with the ruling you just gave. It's no surprise, it's no surprise at all when we look now that yesterday you were brought forward by the Prime Minister and the, and the Leader of the House. It's no surprise that for the first time in defiance of Westminster tradition we have a Speaker who was physically brought here by the executive. Point of order, I recognise the Leader of, of the House. Madam Speaker, in a motion of dissent in the Speaker's ruling, uh, the debate needs to be very tightly uh, delivered by the opposition or by indeed the government. The managed opposition business is now reflecting on the Speaker by suggesting, by suggesting, no, the managed opposition business is suggesting that somehow your position is illegitimate because you were escorted to the chair and nominated and seconded by the Prime Minister and the Leader of the House. If the opposition knew what they were talking about, they would realise that the successful nominee is escorted to the chair by the person they regard as their two closest friends in the chamber, not by their positions. So therefore it is a disgraceful slur on the election that was conducted yesterday into the speakership to now reflect on your chairmanship, not just your ruling. And I would say the marriage opposition business is sailing very close to the wind of being ejected from the parliament for that unparliamentary behaviour. I thank the Leader of the House for his point of order. Uh, the uh, Leader of the Manager of Opposition Business can proceed, but he might take heed of the points that were made by the Leader of the House. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker I simply ask that the House take order of Standing Order 64. Which, which even has in big bold letters. It's not necessary for them to read to read the fine print. No member to be referred to by name and for people to be referred to by their parliamentary titles. It's that simple. It's there in black and white. It's not like we need to go to the big green book to see oh, what's the fine detail on this. It's there as the most basic principle. But not only that, it's the one area of the standing orders that was held up yesterday. It's the one area on how we treat each other and the courtesy we show which is how this was put forward yesterday. If there was ever an example of the behaviour of this government and this House being different to what we were told it would be, it's this. In many examples we're dealing with what was said before the election. On this we are dealing with what the standing orders say in black and white. Madam Speaker, I put to the House there is no way of reading Standing Order 64 that makes it consistent with your ruling. No way at all that those words can be read and your ruling can be correct. I stood up a number of times without moving dissent in the hope that you would reconsider that ruling. We did not want to be moving dissent on the first day. We did not want to be in a situation where this parliament was different to what we were told it was going to be yesterday. But the childishness 
of those opposite, the fact that they couldn't even keep their word for 24 hours, means the one protection that this parliament is meant to have is your office, Madam Speaker. Your office is meant to be the one protection that members of parliament have to make sure that the standing orders are upheld. I put to you, Madam Speaker, and I put to the House, no one can credibly argue that that ruling and the behaviour of the Leader of the House was consistent with the standing orders of this parliament. When we vote on this dissent motion, this parliament is going to make a judgment call as to whether or not the standing orders matter, as to whether or not the words of the Prime Minister about the conduct of this House matter, and, Madam Speaker, I put it, as to whether or not the words you said yesterday matter. This is no small issue. It's not like we're dealing with a grey issue of standing orders or a fine judgment call. It's not like this is an area of huge discretion. It's really simple. Have a level of civility and abide by the standing orders. There's nothing more to it than that. And we can all bury our heads in the in House of Representatives practice. We can come up with all different arguments and a whole lot of standing orders, but there is no way around this one, Madam Speaker. Today you decide what sort of speaker you are going to be for this chamber. Today this House decides whether the words of yesterday meant a thing or whether or not they were just some cheap media lines that were put out there because they thought it was something nice to say on the first day. That's the challenge and that's the decision that is now before this House. Madam Speaker, I actually accept that you believe in this chamber. Well, if you believe in this chamber, defend its standing orders, because there is no way in the world that your ruling did that. No way in the world. And we can't do more than stand up a number of times and invite you to reconsider before we are left with no choice but to move a resolution of dissent. And in doing so, in doing so, it was not until you said that you would regard it as disorderly for me to continue to raise it that we were forced into this situation of moving a dissent resolution. Madam Speaker, if this is going to be an orderly House, then the standing orders must be upheld. If this is going to be a place for schoolyard teasing and games, if this is going to be a place where name-calling is in the order of the day, then this House will back your ruling. If name-calling is going to be the order of the day and childishness is going to be the order of the day, your ruling is about to be backed up. But if the standing orders of this parliament are going to be defended, then your ruling must be dissented from, Madam Speaker. Motion seconds. I call the member for Isaac. Yes, Speaker, I second this motion of dissent in the ruling that you have made, Madam Speaker. I recognise the Leader of the House. Uh, Speaker, I move that the question be now put. Oh, to to recognise the seconder. Well, then I move that the member be no longer heard. The question is that the member be no longer heard. Those in favour, please say aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. I think the ayes have it. Is the division required? Division is required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. The eyes will pass to the, to the right of the chair and the nose to the left of the chair. I point the same tellers as previously.
Vas-y. The result of the division is 87 ayes and 58 noes. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. I give the call. You were on your feet. I call the member for Grainger. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, yesterday, yesterday in this the, place, I call the leader, in this place, uh, I call the it was said of the it should never on... be a place where motives are impugned or characters are. Speaker satisfied. is trying to get. I said I called the leader of the house on a point of order. You're not the leader. I move that the question be put. The question is that the. Let the motion be put. All those in favour, please say aye. The ayes and no. I think the ayes have it. The vote's underway. The vote is underway. You can't have a point of order in the middle of a debate, in the middle of the division. I've called. I will hear the member for Greenland. The point of order is, uh, Speaker, is it the case that the Leader of the House is moving a gag on a dissent motion to the Speaker without anyone defending the Speaker's there is, ruling, there is without no a single defence of the Speaker's there ruling? No, there is no point of order. The member will resume his seat. The member will withdraw his seat. There is no point of order. The question is that the motion be put. All those in favour, please say aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Is a division required? Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors.
And the question is that the member be no longer heard. All those in favour, please say aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. I think the ayes have it. I, the person has been put. I'm sorry. I, I appoint the tellers again. The result of the division is ayes 87, noes 58. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The motion now is that the motion of dissent be agreed to. Those in favour, please say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. no. I think the noes have it. Is a division required? Yes. Ring the bells for one minute. Yes.
Is that Sam too? Lock the doors. I appoint the same tellers as previously. Would those members who have changed their vote kindly inform the tellers? Point of order from the uh, manager of opposition business. The definition with the standing orders is the area of member seats means the area of seats on the floor of the chamber reserved for members. It does not include seats in the advisers' box or special galleries, but does include the seat where the sergeant at arms usually sits. The expression is used in standing orders 128 and 129 for divisions.
Thank you. The result of the division is ayes 56, noes 87. The motion is therefore negative. Members take their seats quickly, please, as the time for the debate on the suspension of standing orders has, has ended, and we will take a vote on that motion. As members take their seats, please. The question now before the House is that the motion to suspend standing orders be agreed to. Those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. no. I think the noes have it. Aye. Division required. Yes, Ring the bells for four minutes. <clears throat>
Lock the doors. I appoint the same tellers as before. The result of the division is ayes 58, noes 88. The question is therefore negative. And as members take their seats quickly, I call the clerk. <laughs> Government business. Notice number one.